Okay, welcome everyone to Cartographer Office Hours meeting. Um, remember that this space is mainly designed to discuss both uh, proposals to keep improving the project and also questions and any topic you may ask the maintainer team. Um, here in the chat, I put the link to the note. Uh, just let me know you don't have it. Recording in progress. All right. So um, feel free to add yourself to the attendees list, including your affiliation. And again, glad to see you, Thomas and Scott. Thank you for joining. So, um, yeah, that's a great question, Emily. So it's called, um, really the first time we speak after the floor. So how you win your, your talk there? You have several, right? Uh, the talk. Yeah, the session went great. Um, it was standing room only, luckily. Um, oh. So, and uh, it went well, got a lot of good feedback afterwards and uh, a bunch of people testing out the custom supply chains I built. So all went well. Great. I'm thinking. And regarding the feedback, we have fully, you know, some pieces of feedback from attendees around supply chains, cartographer in general? Um, sure. Not much regarding cartographer, except, except, wow, there's a lot for me to learn. Uh, okay. With the feedback that I got from most people, um, where they thought that kind of out of the box supply chains that came out of TAP were kind of what cartographer was. And when I showed some of the extensibility capabilities that cartographer offers up offers us people were a bit shocked with how crazy they could get um and i only shared some of my crazy ideas so yeah um but that was the general feedback people were just impressed with how far you could take cartographer awesome thank you for sharing scott Great. Yeah. Question: Did that come mostly from uh, trickery and YTT, or were there other levers that you were pulling to? So it was both options as well as uh, YTT. So there mm -hmm. was a lot of YTT magic in there for certain things, um, but a lot of it was also. Even just like I had a supply chain that I showed where afterwards, like with when I was just talking with some people afterwards where I was actually deploying cross-plane objects um, and whatnot and how far you could take it where I actually deployed virtual machines, for example. There was no YTT speciality in that, but the fact that you could even use Cartographer for, let's say, non-cloud native applications um, or certain other use cases um, interested people as well. Um, so I'd say about 50, 50 for YTT versus other things. And the main one was probably around the options and being able to kind of get rid of YTT in certain cases and adding the conditionals into the supply chain level itself. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Cool. So you mentioned you, you were using cross plane with cryptographer. Any, yeah. any, um, what's been your experience doing so? Um, my experience is that cartographer is much easier to learn than cross plane. <laughs> that doesn't mean cartographer is easy to learn. Uh, trying to understand, wrapping your head around how compositions work, uh, is unique in cross planes world. Um, and much more complex, uh, I would say for getting started. Um, However, the integration has been really easy to do, I would say. Um, I've actually used it with compositions of Kubernetes resources instead of, let's say, Knative services. As a good example, using just the Kubernetes provider, even of cross-plane, 
uh, to be able to do things as well as like service bindings using cross plane compositions to actually stamp out good secrets uh, for what I need um, as part of the supply chain itself. Um, so there are interesting use cases with it. I think Crossplane opens up a lot of options if you know really the in and outs of how compositions work and how to best utilize the tool. Um, but there's a lot of rough edges that don't have to do with cartographer, but Crossplane itself in getting Crossplane to actually work the way you want it to. All right, thank you, Scott. Any other question for Scott? No. All right, so the next item will be to review outstanding RFCs. I was wondering if there's any particular proposal that you would like to discuss here. I see here the artifact tracing family of proposals and some others, but was wondering if um, discussing this here was something you'd like to do. I think I, I would say there's there are a lot of proposals floating around. There are more being written. Um, mm. There isn't um, there isn't a clear sense of what direction might win out. Okay. I mean, it looked like you were going to say something. I was just going to say, I don't know if there's anything new to review or I'm not sure the team is ready to, like, I know we have a bunch of stuff in review and that's open, but I'm not sure the team is ready to put forth like more designs for review during this meeting. If anyone has one that they would like to share and go through, let's let's do that. But I'm not sure that uh, we need to go through the list. OK, no problem. Great. So, uh, oh, or is there any question around RFC proposal? Anyone know? Did, has anything been made clear that is public around the TOC and anything like that that were questions at the last meeting around getting actually RFCs approved and like the blueprint RFC, for example? Uh, Kara, do you want to say anything about the TOC? Uh, David, you just sent me a note on the TOC, is that right? Yeah, I haven't had a chance to read it yet. Yeah, well, the, the the question was how to to implement the decision on dissolving basically TLC. So um, yeah, there there is a couple of mentions in public docs and public cartographer docs on, on the role of the TLC. So we will need to update this uh, to actually reflect the decision that basically the super majority of votes from the maintainers team will be the main criteria for accepting. Uh, proposal for review. Um, that's that's the how um, that I was pending to review. I don't know if you want to add something else, Cara. Uh, yeah, just that. Uh, we, I mean, the basically we were waiting for the how to the how to go about doing that because we we don't have the you know the toc that we had doesn't exist anymore the the leaders that we had um uh uh but really it, it comes down to the process mm -hmm. um uh that was uh in place was stalling how we work so um the the idea is to make sure that we can implement changes um, uh, still in the open, um, uh, but without uh, without a process in place that keeps us from working. So uh, the, the TOC uh, hopefully will be um, uh, sorry, I'm still trying to read the note that you sent um, sorry. will be dissolved. So that the and then the governance model will be updated to reflect those mm -hmm. changes. So hopefully we'll do that in the next week or two. 
mm -hmm. uh, assuming that that that's accepted by the majority. I think that's what you've said here. Is that correct? Yeah, basically. That's yeah. It. And uh, and the team had said that the you know the maintainers said that that was acceptable to them. Okay. Awesome. So that means that now it's just super majority of the maintainers that will be able to approve RFCs going forwards, which That's is it. awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Regarding uh, Blueprints RFC, I think there's been a lot of internal discussions with stakeholders uh, that we're still trying to get alignment on. So we don't have an update on uh, pushing Blueprints through yet, Scott. Okay, sounds good. Hopefully soon, we will have direction. We can uh, start implementing some things. All right, thank you. Does that answer your question, Scott? Yep, that answers it, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, next up, first discussion topic. This was the discussion created a couple of weeks ago by Thomas. Um, I don't know if um, all of you have had a chance to read it, but um, you get the idea from the title. And um, yeah, thank you for bringing it up, Thomas. I don't know if you wanted to briefly reintroduce the discussion here. Yeah, maybe, yeah, short summary. Uh... So I wrote a lot, a lot of things there, but uh, the gist of it is that I was wondering uh, when working with cartographer, how to approach uh, security the supply chain in terms of, um, yeah, what the community is moving on in regards to uh, Salsa framework, uh, the recommendations from the CNCF security group. And yeah, in general, the, the idea of having all uh, steps in a supply chain signed, and with an attestation that is stored somewhere, signed as well, using in total attestations. And yeah, I was trying to figure out how to achieve that in uh, with Cartographer. It's like I opened this discussion, not because we need something in Cartographer, I guess it was more an open question about uh, the ecosystem. When working with Cartographer, what should I consider because, for example, KPAC provides some functionality in regards to this. I can sign images. I can verify the signature with uh, Kiberno. But, uh, for example, uh, if we look at Tecton, they have uh, a new project. It's called Tecton Chains that basically intercepts all steps in a pipeline and deals with uh, creating attestations and signing the attestations at each step. So yeah, I guess that's the summary. Mm -hmm. yeah, my, my sense is um, I think the first thing for, for us is that uh, you know the cartographer model is that we're allowing these we're allowing you to build a supply chain out of these uh, more fully formed agents right that in uh in tecton uh everything that you're doing is code that's written and it's that can be yeah you know, tecton can read all, all the code that's there um uh and I will admit that I have not delved, I, I have a high level understanding of, of how chains work. Um, but when you say that chains is intercepting, um, I'd be interested in looking more into how deep can that interception go? Um, in particular, uh, you know, I would imagine that if you, if you called out from a tecton task to some API um, of a service that's running off of your cluster and it does some work and that work comes back to you. Uh, there's limited att attestation that chains could give you because all it knows is, hey, I called out to this API and it handed me back uh, this 
uh, this artifact. Um, and really that's what's going on with cartographer, right? We, uh, we stamp out an object and then uh, that object goes and spins and it, it hands us back an artifact. Um, if one looks at, uh, if one looks at KPAC and says, uh, I don't like, I don't like the system that it uses for attestation, uh, the way cartographer handles that is we say, oh, we make it really easy for you to swap uh, KPAC for something else that, uh, that you do prefer. Um, I'd say that that's my st stance is that you know if you if you have a desired uh, if you have standards that need to be met by the tooling, cartographer says we make it very easy for you to swap in tooling. So all you need to do is identify tooling that meets your standards, and then it'll be easy peasy. You know, pass in. Uh, pass in from your supply chain the values for uh, for that tool to tell that tool, hey, I want my attestation to go into this centralized place. And as long as the tool supports that sort of uh, model, uh, things will work. Yeah, the, thank you for that. Uh, what got me thinking is how they implemented Tecton Chains because it works in a way that uh, like intercepts, what are the inputs and the outputs of a step? And what is the specification of that step? And I figured, okay, that's what cartographer knows already. He knows the inputs, the outputs, and the template of the resource that it will be stamped. So uh, would it make sense for the cartographer also to like uh, provide an attestation knowing the information that already knows and hooks into this uh, salsa framework, like creating the attestation and having a mechanism to sign that attestation, or uh, would it be each uh, resource part of the supply chain responsible for getting inputs, outputs, and build specification and uh, create this attestation? Uh, and either way, I think it would be nice to have some kind of uh, uh, best practice or guidelines, like, or if you're using cartographer, here's how you can, uh, for example, make your system um, salsa level three, salsa level two, or compliant with this security framework. I don't know if it makes sense, if it's something that can be interesting for the project, but uh, I thought to bring it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, on, your, on your second point, like, it would be valuable to be able to create a system that, that uh, meets, uh, particular salsa levels. Yes, I agree. <laughs> I think that we're aligned there. Um, in terms of uh, cartographer reporting what it is able to know, um, there are some RFCs that we wrote um, a couple months back now. Um, one around artifact tracing, um, which is uh, right now, it's not technically no, like cartographer can't tell you this artifact is a result of uh, these inputs. Like this output is a result of this input that I gave a particular object. Um, and so the artifact tracing RFCs are uh, meant to uh, fix, that, fix that problem to allow users to opt into a system where they would know those things, um, there would be a performance hit. Um, and, you know, for, for some users, that'll be absolutely, like, that, that'll be a trade-off worth making. Um, and then a separate RFC in terms of, okay, what, once you have toggled that switch and you've, uh, you've allowed that tracing to, uh, to be possible, uh, how would that information be uh, communicated out? I think if memory serves me right, that's RFC 18. Um, uh, but both of those are, the, I would say that both of those right now are kind of on hold because of the uncertainty around 
uh, just the lar the project in general, and what is our overall strategy. Yeah, uh, thank you for the information. I appreciate that. Thank you, Thomas, and thank you, Wishima. Is there any other comment around this topic? You can also put your add your comments to the discussion and get going. That will be really interesting. Okay. So if not further comment around this one, we'll move to the next. Removing template recursion. Yeah, hi, I wanted to, Dev Team wanted to bring this up to folks who are using Cartographer because this was an interesting one. We were working on a story to simplify uh, JSON path uh, errors. Um, Cause right now, if they happen deep inside a template, there's this very weird recursion in the error makes it really, really hard to understand what's going on because you basically see uh, little snippets of your template being regurgitated in this large recursive error. It becomes very difficult to really understand what the error is trying to say. So we've 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 made this draft PR, which basically collapses all of that and, and tells you where the path to the document is. But um, when we were making these changes, we we actually noticed that we had a slightly undocumented feature um, that we even have a test for, but we don't really believe people are using. So, um, you know, we kind of just wanted to kind of highlight it here uh, in, in the community meeting, just to see whether there's anyone who's actually using any feature like this. We don't think so. Um, but, you know, we kind of just wanted to, you know, do it in the open as much as possible. So I don't know, Dave, David, if you could just pull open the files change tab there um, on this issue. And if you pop down to, uh, there's a second last folder on the right there that has a 01 supply chain .yaml. So uh, yeah, that's the one at the top there, but it's uh, it says the file was deleted. If you can just click the load diff on it, it's the one on the top, yeah. So if you see here on line uh, 38, there's this like really uh, clever value that's being put into the, the value for this supply chain parameter. And this doesn't actually get evaluated here, uh, um, but it's being passed in from here. And then what actually uh, the feature that this that this test relied on, uh, if you go, uh, if you could actually just click on 00, zero templates now, David, just above uh, templates there, you can see, uh, oh, I think you have to load the diff for that as well. My apologies, it's just at the top there. Uh, okay. That's the one with the blue ring around it. Oops. Well, do you want to screen share? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, let me. Yeah. Maybe that's sharing. Easier. I can share. Yeah. Here we go. Sharing. Yeah. It's a little tricky because of the unloaded diffs. So you can see here, this is the um, the value that I was talking about that was passed in uh, the supply chain. And then later in a template, uh, this test was picking up, uh, where is it now? Here we go. It specifies the service account name inside this template for a runnable. And of course, so what this relies on is this template being evaluated, um, this snippet being evaluated once, which results in the parameter. Keep in mind, this isn't evaluated in the supply chain. So this is actually a string at this time. And uh, we had this feature where we were evaluating the results of that template. So we would end up evaluating workload spec service account name in order to get, you know, the service account of the workload. Um, once again, we have a fairly strong feeling that most people are just using YTT anyway. So this isn't a thing, but kind of just wanted to point this out because this probably would be a breaking change if you relied on anything like this. Um, we're interested to know if you are too, because I think a lot of the dev team feels like it would probably be a feature that would uh, kind of push you in the wrong direction, right? Trying to put too many things into to variables when they could just be templates. Yeah, that's the that's the summary of it. 
Any uh, questions, concerns? I mean, there's no issue of using workload spec service account name within the template itself. It's just removing the ability of doing that now at the supply chain level, right? Correct. Yeah. It's more that like, you know, you can't expect now that if your template results contains template value, uh, template tags, that they will be evaluated anymore. That's, that's basically the thing that we're pulling out that, that's making this magic work here, you know. Okay, basically this will turn into, if we were to pass this in now, I mean, I'm not doing anything like this, but if this were to be in the next version, this change goes in, this would just be evaluated as a regular string would be what I would get as that parameter. Yeah, so you'd, you'd, you'd end up with, uh, well, as you can see, we're deleting this test in this, <laughs> in this situation, right. but, but if this was, uh, if we still kept this test around, this would fail. Right. And, uh, and the value that you'd end up with here would be this weird, uh, so, so this would get evaluated and the value would be this. Right. That as a actual string, not yeah. the value of that. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. 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 I. I am a huge supporter of removing this because this seems like really bad idea and I haven't seen it or used it. Yeah, like I said, we didn't we didn't think so. It was it's very non-obvious and it's non-documented. So we're very happy to hear any kind of feedback like that. Yeah, I would not cry to have this not there at all. Cool. All right. Well look at we might uh, promote that to a non-draft PR this week. Awesome. Thank you, Sam. All right. Um, is there any other topic you would like to discuss here? Anything else? All right. Well, thank you for joining. It was great to see you. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Have a nice day. Thank you.